Hello there. Russell Brand is wrong when he says they're out to squash independent media outlets. It's much, much worse than that. Russell Brand is absolutely right to point out the shenanigans of the legacy media in his latest video. And don't be fooled into thinking that the allegations about his private life devalues the message that Brand puts forward about the legacy media, and the way they appear to collude through the Trusted News Initiative to push certain narratives. The only issue I have is that Brand is focusing on the attempt by the Trusted News Initiative, the TNI, to squeeze the new independent media out of the picture in order to protect some financial vested interests. And as a prime example, he points to big pharmaceutical companies and their funding of media to push their own agendas. And it seems to me that Russell Brand is asking us to follow the big pharma money. But the legacy media and politics, including the king come to that, also pushes other agendas in an extremely coordinated fashion. Not just the likes of big pharmaceuticals where there is billions to be made. And that is, we are also being force-fed a complete woke agenda, from gender identity to the normalisation of certain distasteful behaviour on those of an early age. And I would argue that these have nothing to do with making vast amounts of money. No, the agenda here is something else entirely. And the legacy media falls over itself to back the likes of Bill Gates. But he's obscenely rich already. So what is the attraction of him gaining even more wealth? And we only have to look around us to see that much, if not all, of that new woke agenda does society much more harm than good? Rising crime rates, increased use of narcotics, the erosion of the importance of the family, the breakdown of local communities, the importing of conflict, the attacks on our own heritage. And how about the dismantling of domestic law in favour of international law, where the lawmakers and judges are far too many pitchfork lengths away from us for them to be at risk from our wrath. I could go on. But the worst must be the stolen innocence of childhood. Why would the legacy media and their paymasters push all this if their intent was simply to make more money? How can destroying lives, futures and the society they operate in help them make more money. Surely there is much more money to be made in investing in the future and protecting the young. Think the baby boomer years. Everybody says they had it good, almost too good. Well, they were the ones living in tighter communities and families and having children. Maybe there's a lesson there. So why is the media and their backers now so intent on doing all they can to break down our traditions, break up our communities, erase our history and portray bringing up a family as an act of evil? Where's the money in all of this? Now a lot of you will right now be saying, Ah, but Jeff, the rich are getting wealthier while all this is going on so the breakdown of society must be profitable for them. It must be enabling them to snap up land and other assets for a song while the rest of us go bankrupt and starve. But I would say that's not the whole story. These people are already so rich and powerful they don't actually need to put everyone else into destitution to make more money. In fact, it makes much more sense to have a relatively wealthy population around them to continually circulate the money through their coffers for profit. Now many might say that the few just want to own everything and control the rest of us, and that's when we get nearer to the truth of the matter. People like that are probably pretty few and far between. 
And to think like that, you would need to be wired up far more differently than I or anyone else I know is wired up. People who want to take everything for themselves and basically enslave the human race, the WEF, you will own nothing and be happy types, I would describe them as pure evil. Because people of this type, who have a mindset of total ownership over everything, once they own and control all the land and assets, will want to own and control all the humans too. And in the final analysis, they will demand your total obedience and subservience. Your worship, in fact. You can already see it in their approach to the pandemic and net zero. Just listen and watch Klaus Schwab. What else would there be to sate their continual and ever-deepening lust for total ownership other than control over humanity itself? But what would come next for them after they control humanity? I shudder to think. And whatever or whoever is at the core of all of this isn't just looking to make a bob or two more on the side. No, they are evil and want to own and control everything and own your minds and souls for some or other nefarious reason. And the ownership and control they are looking to achieve is total over everything financial, physical and mental. So evil it is. Just look at the recent assaults on our freedoms and our finances while they use psychological warfare techniques to cow us into a sort of permanent semi-terror of non-dissent. None of this is human. It is anything but. It is pure evil. Now those who are pulling the strings here have a group of people around them who do think it is about the money. And these are the people who are pushing any button they can to further the destruction of society in the hope they can grab another million or billion or two on the way. But they, in the end, will also find that stripped from them too. And don't be taken in by those who say we must tax the wealthy much more. No, because what these people mean is that they must have control over the money instead of the wealthy having control of it. It's never about the ordinary person having control of their own money and destiny. No, someone will always be there to ensure that they get to look after and spend your money on your behalf, whether it be banker or politician. And all the while we have an establishment inflation rate set at 2% to erode our wages and savings over time. And wage rises and interest rates rarely seem to compensate for that, do they? But that's by the by. Right now we're being subjected to an attack on our freedoms and humanity of biblical proportions. When have we ever seen before, for real, had talk of mandated medical procedures, programmable and controllable central bank digital currencies, Facial recognition cameras at every street corner. The sanctity of childhood under such vicious assault. The cultish argument that the science is settled where things like net zero are concerned. The demonisation of true biology. The blatantly two-tier legal system. The constant attempts to rob us of our own culture while decrying the ordinary people's views as far right. The emerging threat of artificial intelligence, while politicians lie about having all the answers. The list goes on. And why, oh why, does everything have the date 2030 stamped all over it? No, this is not about shutting down competing social media channels so as to make some extra cash. No, this is pure evil and the total enslavement of the human race. Please do not be fooled into thinking otherwise.